This is the last episode of our Update 4, Update 5 Let's Play series, and it kind of feels weird. Partly because the, the save doesn't actually feel complete, it's not, there's still lots that can be done for it. But as you all know, I have lots of reasons why I'm starting a new save, if you've seen the recent video on it, which means this will be the last episode. And I'm about to show you the whole process that we went through to get from those batteries to running these. But please, if you've really enjoyed this series, don't fear, there will be a new one starting with update 6. I've already started it and I'm looking forward to getting the first episode out to you soon. And upon update 6 going to early access, I would like this save to be available to everyone who wants to check it out. But there are some adjustments that I need to make. First of all, I'm going to remove all of the items that aren't being used. So say goodbye to this train station, which unfortunately we've not been able to utilize, along with what was going to be our nuclear power plant. Instead, we've obviously got a different one. And probably this quartz factory, which I rarely use now. But don't worry, I'll leave the architecture builds in the northern forest in case any of you want to check them out. I'll also leave this as well, which we haven't utilized, um, but it looks kind of cool, so why not? Oh, and the other thing, of course, is going to be removing any of the unused rail lines because there's no point if they're not being used. And if you're wondering if you can play my save on update six, well, you can, and it's pretty unscathed, generally speaking, bar a few little clips through the, the train line. But overall, it's pretty adaptable. So if you want to uh, play update six with it, by all means, please do. But enough of that, it's time to get into it. Last week, we created this battery factory, which is producing 120 batteries per minute, if I remember correctly, which will give this drone the batteries it needs in order to travel across to the uranium node up here, which is going to provide us the uranium ore that we need to get this power plant running. But for the power plant to run, I will have to sort out all of this mess. So the first thing that we're going to be doing today is deleting all of these, including all of these awesome sinks. We'll move the awesome sinks over to that area and we'll just get this bus running so that we have all of the ores coming through along here and we'll run the power as well. But this is gonna take us a while, so I'm going to get on with this and then once it's done, or more or less done, I'll uh, let you see how it's going. So this is the bus that I've come up with. So let's just drop down and you can see that I've changed it from three on top and one below to two and two, just to make it a little bit cleaner uh, and more uh, regimental rather than weirdly shaped and if we go along here you can see that I've placed the, uh, the awesome sinks just before they go into the factory for now until we're absolutely ready to, to get going so they're just uh, getting us some coupons we're, we're doing quite well with them uh, the other thing that I need to do is to bring the sulfuric acid around here that's the other thing that I haven't done yet. And then connect all of these. I totally forgot about it. So what we'll do with that is... Hmm. Probably run the pipelines along here. And then feed down through the windows. I think that's going to be our best bet. And the other thing, of course, with that... Oh, if we drop down here. And down here is that we need to sort out recycling of the the actual uh, oh, sulfuric acid even. So you see we've got 10 extra coming out. Well that across all of these, it's 20 per one, we've got 10. So that's 200 extra sulfuric acid to deal with. So we're going to have to grab our pipelines. I think we'll probably do it here and just run them all the way out to here where they'll re-merge with the sulfuric acid on that side. But first of all, we do need to get that sulfuric acid here. Oh, would help if I had resources. <laughs> the sulfuric acid is going to come from this train station. So we're going to run the line all the way through here, hopefully relatively cleanly, so that it can link up with this bus. And what I'll probably do is run the pipelines underneath, uh, maybe along just this side to keep it nice and clean. So I'm still working on this 
liquid bus. We're just about done. I just need to make sure this is all lined up. And then... I've got a feeling this isn't in position, is it? Something doesn't look right about that. Oh, no. Great. We're going to paint this so that it's yellow with the rest of the pipe so that we know it's sulfuric acid. And then I get to show you what I've done in terms of the balancing of this. Okay, let's place that there. I'm going to head over to the factory. You can see we've done the curved uh, bus again. It kind of clips into uh, the top of this, but I'm actually okay with that. And as I mentioned, we did end up going with having the liquid all on one side. And the reason for that was because when it comes out this end, it's going to be easier for us than having to dip around the, the belts. So the sulfuric acid, once it's delivered, will run along here. And from this point onwards, we have the, the excess or byproducts of sulfuric acid arriving into these. And then the pumps will bring it along here to then go to each of these. Looks pretty clean, I think. Only thing is, I do believe I'm going to need to have to place valves, which can be a bit buggy. So I'm a little bit anxious about doing that, but we need to, to make sure that we're getting enough of the, well, we're making sure that we're not getting too much sulfuric acid in, because if so, that will stop these from filling up, which will then, or emptying, sorry, which will then mean that the byproducts just won't be removed and then we won't be producing the plutonium cells and then everything just stores, you know? Oversaturating anything is, is bad. The next thing that I need to work on really is to sort out the load balancing so that when we turn this on, it won't become oversaturated and end up killing me because of the radiation. Because we're producing 10 uranium fuel cells per minute, we're going to have to divide them between the five power plants. Unfortunately, we actually have enough for 50 power plants. So it's not just five that we're load balancing between, but it's actually uh, five entering here. We have to split it between these five nuclear plants. And then when it comes to a nucle nuclear plant, plant, we then have to divide it by 10. <sighs> okay, so what we're going to do for this load balancer, first of all, is we're going to have a conveyor splitter. This is going to first bring all the resources in, and then we need to divide it into one tenth. So first thing that we can do is create a five to one splitter and immediately, I don't know what we're going to do with, I think this will go behind. We'll take the other f uh, five power plants worth to one side. This is useful later. This is going to be our overflow that goes to a sink. So now that we've placed this splitter, we have a merger here. And the reason for that is when you're splitting, if you have to split evenly, it's fine. We, we can split, say, two here and two on that side, and it will all balance. But if you're doing an odd number, say, for example, five, which we are here, we'll have to use three of the outputs on this splitter and only two on this one. However, that means that this splitter is going to receive more resources than that one and thus it's not going to be an even split. So we're going to have to take the excess from what would be a third uh, exit all the way back to the beginning here. So that's why we've placed a merger. And then obviously from here, we're going to connect the splitters up. So now we have a two, one to two split. If we add a merger here, We can put one output in there. And then this one will be our uh, output that will take the resources up to the power plant just above here. And now we need to connect these ones, all of these excess um, outputs to the, the line that's going to the awesome sink, which will also include 
the, f the half that we split off originally. Let's do it like that. Lots of uh, mergers. We probably didn't need as many. I've probably overcomplicated this. But this will now allow us to split uh, from here into 10. <laughs> and we're going to bring that one uranium fuel cell up along here with the outputs going out this way. So this is on the floor above. And we'll also run the water along here as well. And this will go up to a storage area for now. Ah, only four more to go. When it comes to the water, I wanted it coming down from the top lake. Uh, ideally, I'd make these little uh, waterfalls kind of like a dam that's just letting out a bit of water. And you can see we've already got started. We're bringing the pipe up behind it and then along a wall to try and keep it looking clean without distracting from the look of the overall build. It's actually a very simple way of doing the water because the head lift from above is going to make sure that there's enough pressure in the pipes to make sure that the nuclear fuel plants are receiving enough water. Goodness me. And it might not be the most aesthetically pleasing look, but it's something that's efficient and easy to do because we are on a time ticking clock thing because update 6 is coming out like tomorrow. And on the subject of update 6, obviously I'm really excited to start a new Let's Play. That episode will be coming out the following week from this video, so do keep your eyes on this. Uh, I'm very excited to get started. So after all of that load balancing, it's finally time for us to try this out. We're going to make sure that the, the drone flies off and collects some uh, uranium ore for us. And then hopefully this is all going to, to get running. I do need to add a train station. We won't do that for this episode, but I'll probably do it outside. I'd like to have a train station which drops off batteries in this area here. There he goes. Fly, fly. <laughs> So these are all running, which is good, or at least they're, they're loading up if we look here. Yeah, they're just waiting for some encased uranium cells at the moment. Um, that's you, right? Yeah, they're just waiting for some more uranium. Yes, it's running. It's a shame they take a minute to do, but we'll be waiting. We'll see them. Hopefully we'll see them underneath here. It's almost time. They're almost ready. Come on. There it is, our first uranium fuel cell and our second one, closely followed by uh, these ones, I'm sure. Uh, right, we're going to run across to the actual nuclear power plant. We have a bit of time because uh, these are quite slow, uh, but we'll see them coming out the other end. And here they come. And here they come. Oh, goodness me. Really? Come on. <laughs> it's taking forever. There we go. There's the first one and the second one. And they're going around. It's like a little race course. They're chasing after each other. And here they are being split off in the uh, the first load balancer. It's going to take them a while, actually, because it's all Mark 1s. But you can see it's running, which is nice. And then we should be able to see them come up on this side as well. Although it's going to take them a bit of time. I might have to cut this. There we are. Would look better from the other side, wouldn't it? <laughs> so there might be a slight issue here. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, let's just remove that. Was it just me trying to be clever? I think it was, right? There we go. Oh, oh, we actually have three. Oh, wow. So we'll definitely see one of them turn on. Well, maybe. <laughs> and there we are. We have three, I don't know, possibly five of the fuel gener... Uh, nuclear fuel plants running. I love the steam with the radioactive sign behind it. Looks great. And looking at the production, you can see we've got, we were on what, 52? We're at 60. I think this is all five of them up and running now. Fantastic. And if you're wondering what I'm doing with the nuclear waste, well, at the moment we're just storing it here, but the idea will be that I place a train station in this spot. So if we do want to come back to this and actually do nuclear fuel rod recycling, um, what we can do is just run that waste into the train station and then ship that to somewhere else. And that way we're not going to have to deal with the nuclear waste uh, radiating us while we're trying to build. But we are going to leave the series here. Uh, obviously I am going to clean up the save a bit in my spare time and then let you guys check it out once update 6 goes to early access. Hopefully it will all be done by then. 
But thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you stay tuned for our new Let's Play, which will be coming out in a few days. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our solo clips patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag, James Irwin, and Fireflesh, and Jerry too, as well as our Lunas, Dixie Chris, Lord of July, and Ben, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Chick Norris. Until next time, as always... Ciao for now.